Is a 24-hour trip to Salzburg really enough? Will this allow its visitors to see all of its attractions? Stay till the end and let's find out together. The beautiful Austrian city of Salzburg is small. Many argue that a day is enough to explore everything that this city has to offer. On our recent trip to Austria, Adrian and I decided to put this theory to the test. By the way, join us on our upcoming travels. Subscribe now to get notifications. Where are we? Salzburg. <laughs> Salzburg, located in the west and close to the German border, is the fourth largest city in Austria. From Vienna, it is a two and a half hour, very scenic train ride. Adrian and I had just visited the beautiful cities of Budapest and Vienna, and we decided to make a 24-hour stop at Salzburg on our way to Munich. Salzburg is a city rich in history as reflected in its architecture and ancient monuments and is home to amazing cuisine like the world-famous pretzels and the thin-breaded slice of pork called Wiener Schnitzel. It is home to classical music, amazing art, and very unique culture. The mesmerizing Baroque and Romanesque architecture that define most of its buildings, and of course, countless of tributes to its most famous son, the world-famous composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Salzburg lies on the banks of the River Salzach and to connect one side of the city to the other, pedestrians use several footbridges. The first notable one is the Steg, also known as the Lovelock Bridge. Of all the bridges, this is the most modern one, having reopened in 2000 after it was destroyed and reconstructed. You will be impressed by the number of Lovelocks on this bridge. This tradition has been around for over a hundred years where lovers mark padlocks to profess their undying love. And of course, with Salzburg's devotion to the brilliant composer Mozart, they built the Mozart Steg in 1903. At one end of the bridge is a cute little coffee shop. The bridge was once privately owned and charged a toll for anyone wanting to use it. But the city of Salzburg purchased it and opened to pedestrians and cyclists in 1921. We are in Salzburg today, and yes, we came here during Christmas. <laughs> hey everyone, we are in Salzburg. Hey everyone, we're in Salzburg today, and yes, we are here in December, but please do not think this is all about Christmas because we'd like to show you how beautiful this town is and there are so many things for you to explore and see. Most of our time spent in Salzburg was walking through their historic and quaint streets or alleys known as Gassas. Adrian and I loved it as it felt like stepping back in time. Linzer Gasse is the main pedestrian artery through Salzburg's historical district located on the right side of the river. As we casually strolled through Linzer Gasse, we came across a lot of shops and restaurants. And since we came during Christmas time, there were so many delightful treats to choose from. Linzer Gasse is also where the historic hotel Stad Kruk is located. This hotel is family run and occupies a building that is 700 years old. Here we found a restaurant that served one of our favorite drinks, a pint of cola and orange juice mixed together called Spetzi. If you've been to Germany, you've probably seen Mezzo Mix. I had a lovely risotto, and Adrian had the traditional Wiener Schnitzel. Quite possibly the most popular street in Salzburg is the Getreide Gasse. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is famous for its wide variety of shops businesses, and its architecture. If you happen to be a Red Bull fan, there is a shop here dedicated to the sports teams, including the FC Red Bull Salzburg Football Club. A unique feature of the Getreide de Gasse are the many houses with public passageways on the ground floor, which connect to the University Square and Gasse. 
A few of them have become shopping arcades. Guitar de Gassa is also the birthplace of the world-famous composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart at number 9. It is now a museum that you can visit. The admission rates vary with discounts for families, students, groups, and seniors. Unfortunately, we were not allowed to take pictures or film in the museum. There are lots of Mozart goodies available all over Salzburg, but the one you must try is a Mozart Kugel, which directly translates to Mozart's ball. It is definitely something that you must have a taste of. However, do not consume this if you have an allergy to nuts. It is a small round confection made of pistachio, marzipan, nougat, covered in dark chocolate. It was invented to honor the hundred years since Mozart had passed. Another street in Old Town Salzburg that we enjoyed walking through is Goldgasse. This romantic lane derives its name from the goldsmiths and the other artisans who once had businesses here. Lined with many shops that offer many things from leather goods to fashion items, it is a street full of historical charm. Judengasse is a narrow lane that serves as an extension of the previously shown Getreide Gasse. We spotted the most festive shop I have ever seen in Europe, Christmas in Salzburg. Judengasse is one of the most popular shopping streets in the Salzburg Historic District. It was also once the hub of Jewish life in the city from the Middle Ages until the Jews were expelled in 1498. The Kranzlmarkt is a lovely historic location in Old Town and is connected to the Rathausplatz. Rathausplatz is where the old city hall can be found together with many shops. Adrian and I just took our time strolling through the Altstadt or Old Town and enjoyed seeing historic sites. And Salzburg will not be complete without another ode to Mozart, the Mozart Platz. We came here for the amazing Christmas market and even on a rainy day, we were still enthralled by its history-filled beauty. In the middle of the square is a statue of the famous composer. If you want to see a giant Mozart Kugel that is not edible, of course, then head to Capital Platz and see that little man on the top of a ball. That's confectioner Paul First, who created the Mozart Kugel in 1890. Just a short walk up the hill from Capital Platz is the funicular or Festungsbahn. This funicular, which was opened in 1892, takes you to the fortress at the top of the hill. It is a short yet scenic ride up the Festungsberg mountain. We wanted to go during the day, but since we had booked an evening event here, we had no choice. But we ended up not regretting our evening trip. Even on a rainy day, we were stunned by this breathtaking view of Salzburg and its lights. The Hohen Salzburg Fortress is one of the largest medieval castles in Europe. Its construction began in 1077 by the Archbishops of Salzburg as they were very powerful political figures. They built and expanded the fortress to protect their interests. Its main purpose was to protect them from invasion, especially from the Turkish during the 16th and 17th centuries. One of the main reasons we love returning to Europe is because of its history. Hohen Salzburg's fortress is a dream destination for history buffs like me and Adrian. Every corner of the fortress had a relic so well preserved and each holds a unique story. The fortress features many museums, but since we came at night and all of them were closed, Adrian and I just explored the seemingly countless historic alleys and just enjoyed the solitude in the rain. We will definitely come back in the future to explore all of the fortress's highlights. came to the fortress to watch a classical music concert, and it was definitely the highlight of our very short stay. 
the very talented musicians treated us to a mesmerizing medley of songs by Mozart and Vivaldi, and we just didn't want the evening to end. There was something magical about being a part of a small group listening to a concert in a 900-year-old building. Thanks to Viator, we easily found tickets to this magical concert for a very reasonable price. The link to this event can be found in our description. And for those of you who want to know what to wear during the concert, just come in a smart casual outfit. During the intermission, Adrian and I decided to step back outside and do a little bit more exploring. Just a short walk from the concert venue, we found a cafe that had more breathtaking panoramic views of Salzburg. At this point, we were questioning our decision to spend just a day in this amazing city. After the concert, we decided to take the funicular again. There was an option to walk back down to the Capitol Platz, but it was raining really hard. And I'm glad we took the funicular. The ride was short, but the scenery was amazing. Since we didn't have much time left since we boarded our train to Munich, Adrian and I got up early and visited the oldest bakery in Salzburg, the Stiff's Bakere, run by the monks in the monastery. They sell three types of bread, sweet, rye, and sourdough. Next to the bakery is the water wheel that supplies electricity to the flour mill. Oh, and did I mention that the bread was yummy? Just a few steps from the bakery are the Salzburg catacombs. Overlooking St. Peter's Church and Cemetery, the catacombs are a series of mausoleums carved into the face of the Malchberg rock. It was built in 1627, making it Salzburg's oldest graveyard. If you are like me and you grew up watching The Sound of Music, you may recognize this from the scene where the Von Trapp family sought refuge in the cemetery. I made it a point to climb up into the caves, which are believed to have been built by early Christians in 400 and 800 AD. And I'm telling you, the steep climb to the top was definitely worth it. Not only do you get stunning views, but seeing how ancient and well-preserved this place is just astonishing. There are two chapels. One is Gertrude Chapel, dating back to 1178, and the Maximus Chapel, which is 40 steps higher, and believed to be much older. Many famous personalities, artists, scholars, and merchants were laid to rest at this cemetery. The catacombs are caves carved into the fortress hill, and as mentioned earlier, are most likely of late antique to early Christian origin. Many believe that the catacombs did not serve as burial sites, but as early Christian meeting venues. After visiting the catacombs, we headed to St. Peter's Abbey. From the outside, it is very unassuming, but once we stepped in, we couldn't believe how stunning it was inside. This church, with its combination of Romanesque, Gothic, Baroque, Renaissance, and Rococo styles, just took our breath away. The abbey was founded in 7th century and is considered to be the oldest monastery in existence in the German-speaking world. Our next stop was the Salzburg Cathedral, where we set ourselves to watch the concert at noon. On our way to the cathedral, we spent some time at Residenzplatz. 
The beautiful fountain in the middle of the square was covered for the winter, but the square was a perfect setting for a vibrant Christmas market. We came here the night before and we loved it so much that we decided to come back. Even with a downpour, we braved the rain and checked out all of the stalls in the market. Many of the goods for sale were handcrafted and very unique. But of course, what I enjoyed the most was the food and the sweets they had on offer. I found one that looked like a chocolate coated soft serve ice cream, but after biting into it, I even liked it better. So this is just fluffy marshmallow. And seriously, I thought these soaps were real. At noon, we entered the cathedral and heard mass. We were also treated to a concert of Christmas music played on the organ that Mozart had once played. Salzburg Cathedral is Salzburg's most important sacred building. It is rich in relics and boasts of a very fascinating history. This Baroque cathedral was first built in 767. To help preserve this monument, visitors over 18 years old are charged 5 euros per person to enter. Our last stop before boarding our train from Munich was the Mirabel Palace. We didn't have much time left, so we just roamed the palace gardens which were gorgeous but lacked the vibrance that it is known for in the spring. Mirabel Palace was built in 1606 and today it serves as a backdrop for stunning pictures and romantic weddings. Many concerts are held in the palace as well and the palace and the gardens are open all year. In the peak summer months, it is best to visit early in the morning to avoid the crowds. Adrian and I enjoyed walking all over Salzburg, but here's a top tip. Wear comfortable shoes and avoid wearing heels. There are cobblestones everywhere and the uneven surface can easily fatigue your feet. After this trip, we asked ourselves, is 24 hours enough to fully explore Salzburg? Well, our simple answer is no. We left Salzburg feeling like we had only scratched the surface, and this city has so much to offer. For example, I love museums, and I didn't get to visit a lot of them during our short stay. We felt like we had missed out on truly enjoying the city. I'd like to come back in the spring so that we can see Mirabel Palace in its full floral glory. Also, we'd like to venture to the fairy tale town of Hallstatt. It would be nice to go down the slides in the salt mine too. We hope you liked this video, and if you did, please subscribe to our channel to join our adventures. Thanks again for watching, and we can't wait to see you again soon. Stay curious and keep exploring.